is it beauty. This is the latest model by Andrew Lawrence and Leggio. I saw them about three weeks before Christmas, and I think this is superb. I said, what is it? Well, it's a unicorn, they say, but it's got wings like a pegasus, so it's a pegacorn or something. I didn't like that. I'm calling it a flying unicorn. Superbly crafted, as all their products are. Here's the thing from the back view. Look at those golden wings. Wonderful. And a golden horn, too. Beautiful, beautiful creation, they make. And the quality is so good as well. So that's my favourite toy for this Christmas, I think. I haven't given it a name yet, but I'm calling it a flying unicorn. Absolute beauty. So I received a number of Christmas presents this year, but these are my favourite half dozen which I'm going to show. That's probably the best of them, I think. I think the second best is probably this one which a friend of mine found in Paris. It's one of these magnetic rail things which, when you set it spinning on the inside, it, it, it performs quite nicely, actually. And I set it spinning and start going round and round and round and round and round. It's got a centrifugal switch, so it only switches on once it's spinning fast. But he said that the man in the shop said you ought to also try spinning on the outside of the rail. That's on the outside of the rail. And set it spinning like that, because then, if you're careful with it, you can get it independent. You can get it knocked off and just spin like a spinning top. Oh, do it again. Get some small speed. Ooh, that's fun, isn't it? noisy too, but nice one. So I think that's probably my second favourite toy for the year. Very nice for Christmas. Then completely unexpected I came across this wonderful one. It was a jigsaw puzzle, very easy to do, took me about half an hour. But it's the periodic table which I love. Ever since my school days I've enjoyed looking at the building bricks of the universe. I mean, 10 years earlier, I was 14 when I first came across this, I was making building bricks simply out of, um, out of bricks. But 10 years later, when I started school, I started discovering the periodic table. And I take a great delight in this because there's several features here which I hadn't seen before. For instance, did you know the yellow ones, which is a new feature, I think, of the periodic table for nowadays, are all the semiconductors? Well, you can silicon and germanium obviously are there, but did you know boron and tellurium are also in that family? Yes, I didn't know that at all. Extraordinary. It's got a missing piece. Uh, someone I've seen my friend who made this, he'll offer a replacement. I said, no, no, I like the idea of a missing piece. It's only one of the lanthanides, <laughs> so I don't mind that at all. And I, here we have the noble gases with the bottom one here, which hasn't even got a name. It's 120. It's never been made. It'll be chemically inert, but atomically very far from it, probably last about a nanosecond. So this was a wonderful experience for me to be able to do this just after Christmas, doing something which I've loved ooh, way back in my childhood and feel very nostalgic about. And as I was going through them, I was thinking, oh yes, hello, hafnium, oh, there you go, osmium, and so on and so on. It's been a most enjoyable time, that. Another friend of mine gave this extraordinary thing to me. He was always coming up with what he calls some um, watsits. And here's a lovely example of it. The question is, what on earth can this thing be for? Look, two balls, and I have opened one up in order to find out what goes on inside, and it turns out to be a little cotton ball. He's no idea what it is. All it says on the outside embossing is warning, choking hazard, and all the usual stuff. And what was I supposed to do with it, or whatever? I have no idea, and he didn't know either, and it, it was just picked up from recycling, so he's got no packaging to go with it. So, any ideas out there, what on earth these silver balls with a sort of band of, you clip them together, and all these little tabs then f makes it form a proper little sphere. But what can that be used for? Some very purposeful idea for it. I don't know what it is. Here's one that I got from a colleague, which he found in Berlin. It's a ramp of wood with one of those little things that goes down the ramp. It features a cat who's chasing after a mouse. So here he goes, down the ramp. Chase, 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 chase. Oh, has he caught him? I don't know. He's still chasing him. Chase, 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 chase. Isn't that beautiful? That was from a, a, a Christ, Christmas market in the middle of Berlin and very, very recently, so that goes into my collection of gravity toys, and it's an a absolute beauty that. I'm very pleased to receive that. And the last item is something that one of my brothers gave me at Christmas time. 
This is very nice indeed. It's a nice warm scarf, and I can wrap it twice, I don't need to. But it's got, look, it's got a batteries inside it. And when you turn it on, well, something happens. But I'll have to dim the lights to show it properly. So I'm wearing a scarf, and at the appropriate moment, I push the button and turn it on. Where's the button? There we are. Now look at that. Isn't that beaut? And there's programs in it so that I can actually, this is flashing mode, of course, and I can do um, melting mode, and I can do constant, constant light, and then flashing three colours, etc. But I think the best one is probably flashing and melting. And that's a lovely thing to walk in to a darkened room for a Christmas party. So, a good Christmas this year. And to you, I wish a very happy Christmas. Compliments of the season.